Hello world and welcome back to the Dweebatron channel. On my Facebook page I mentioned that in this episode I would talk about beer cans. But to make it an extra cantastic extravaganza we will talk about oil cans too. So what's been selling lately? Well, mid-century Fenton has been doing pretty well. I've sold several pieces recently including this beautiful oval vase in their rose pattern. I really liked this piece. Also, this fine cut and block vase sold, and as a bonus, I was able to deliver it to a customer here in Portland, which saved me the cost of shipping. This one had a lot of uranium in the glass, and it glowed nicely. And these openers are still selling. I'm down to less than a dozen, I think, but they continue to trickle out. This one didn't even have any advertising on it, just a fancy scroll design. But somebody wanted it. And that brings us to the sale that will kick off our discussion about beer cans. These four Pocono Mountain beer cans sold for $17.63. Beer cans were one of the first collectibles I ever learned about. I started studying coins when I was 10, bottles when I was 12, and because of all the bottle digging I was doing, I was also turning up lots and lots of old cans. And in the relatively dry climate of eastern Washington, Many of them would often turn up in pretty decent shape, even after being buried for many years. So in 1983, I purchased these two books here and started learning about beer cans. Beer started getting put into cans in the early 1930s. Before that, it was always in bottles. The first wave of beer cans all had bottle caps on them and cone-shaped tops, aptly called cone tops by collectors. My books showed huge prices for many of these early cans, and I was anxious to find some. The dump I was digging in at the time that I bought these books had thousands and thousands of old cans and from that dump alone I put together an impressive collection of different old beer cans and oil cans which we will talk about next. Of course there were also lots of old bottles and the license plate that started my whole eBay adventure came from that dump as well, but I digress. I was finding lots and lots of Martin's beer cone top cans like this one that someone recently sold. I never did find a really good example of this can which is too bad because examples in good condition will bring hundreds of dollars. This example shown here has large holes rusted out of the back of it. Old cans can show up anywhere. I found a Budweiser can like this one at the bottom of Rimrock Lake when they drained it. The anaerobic conditions at the bottom of the lake preserved the can for over 50 years. So how much can some of these old cans go for? Well the most I've personally ever seen one sell for was $19,000. The most expensive recent sale I could find was this Stortz Winter Brew beer and it did pretty well I'd say. By the way, all of these cans are empty. Sellers can't sell alcohol on eBay anymore even though we used to. If you see the tops intact then the cans were either bottom opened like these or they could be air filled like this one currently in my store. It has never been opened and there is nothing inside. But let's get back to cans that are selling for way too much. Here are a few cone top cans that sold recently for a decent price. The next style of cans to come along after cone tops was the flat top can. These were opened with the church key style openers like the ones I've been selling recently. And there are plenty of good cans to watch for. Here are just a few of the better flat top cans. In the mid 1960s the pull tab was first invented. Those cans may not be quite as collected as cone tops or flat tops but they can still do really well as you can tell by these here that recently sold. So keep an eye out for old beer cans. Now let's talk about oil cans. As I said before, I was finding lots of old oil cans in that dump along with all the old beer cans. And what do you know? Oil cans are collectible too. Here are just a few examples of some that sold recently. Pretty good, right? But they don't have to be motor oil cans. Other oil cans do well too, like this can of fishing reel oil. Or gun oil. Or even sewing machine oil. Even the applicator style cans or oilers are collectible such as this John Deere oiler or this International Harvester oiler. So add oil cans to your list of items to watch for when you're out hunting. These can often be found for really cheap because they get overlooked as a collectible item and they are often found all greasy or icky. Well that wraps up episode 16. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like more content be sure to check out my Facebook page or eBay store both of which are value vintage spelled just like you see here. Thanks again and until next time remember to take good care of each other and I'll see you then.